Welcome back to Matt at an Empty Classroom with me, Mr. Sutton. This is part five of the lesson on integration by parts. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to be taking you through what I would describe as a quirky example of integration by parts. What I would encourage you to do is to pause the video and try this one out for yourself. My advice is to just stick with it because the result is quite neat. But try it first before you just passively watch me go over it. e to the x sine x. Two things multiplied together, so integration by parts is going to be my strategy. So I'm going to start off by writing that u is e to the x and that dv dx is sine x. That means I'm going to get du dx as e to the x and v as uh, negative cos x. So, putting that into my integration by parts, I've got the integral of e to the x sine x. It's going to equal now uv, uv. So I've got negative e to the x cos x minus the integral of v du by dx. So negative e to the x cos x. Uh, which as we saw in the previous video, you can rewrite as negative e to the x cos x plus uh, the integral of e to the x cos x. I'm going to keep writing that here, you'll see why. So we've got something that looks very similar, e to the x cos x. So we're going to integrate by parts again. So again, I'm going to call u e to the x, and I'm going to call dv dx cos x, and that's going to give me du dx is e to the x, and v is sine x. Okay, now let's write the whole thing. The original integral is e to the x sine x, equals negative e to the x cos x, that bit hasn't changed, plus, and I've now got my second integration by parts, so I've got uv, uh, so e to the x sine x, uh, minus the integral of v du dx. So e to the x sine x. Okay, so let's just write that as a single expression without the big square brackets and have a look at where we are. So e to the x sine x equals negative e to the x cos x plus e to the x sine x minus the integral of e to the x sine x. Now this is why I was talking about at the start of the video when I said stick with it, because you might be thinking, well hang on a minute, Mr. Sun, we're, we're back where we started, it's looped. And yes, it has looped, but we can use the fact that it's looped to help us solve the integral. Here we've got negative the integral of e to the x sine x. We can add all that over onto the other side, and that will actually give us two lots of the same integral, because we can collect those integrals just like we would normally collect like terms. And what that would leave us with on the right hand side, I'm just going to write it the other way around because of the negative, is e to the x sine x minus e to the x cos x. So to find the result of integrating e to the x sine x, all I need to do is divide this by 2. So that means that the integral of e to the x sine x is equal to a half e to the x sine x minus a half e to the x cos x. And not forgetting the plus c. 
So sometimes you get these integrals where you can do them by parts and it looks as though they're looping, but actually you can use the fact that you get the same integral the second time you do parts to have a number of that integral and then divide by that number. Um, and if you wanted to check it, what you can do is you could write this uh, expression here as a half e to the x and then sine x uh, minus cos x. Uh, and that is a really easy function to differentiate using the product rule. And what you'll find if you do it, lo and behold, you get e to the x sine x. I'd encourage you to give that a go. There we go. That's the end of the lesson on integrating by parts. Thanks for sticking with it. I'll see you next time.